one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Call to order the uh, November meeting of the Park and Rec Board of 10th uh, Rand Township. Um, can I have an approval of the minutes of the previous uh, meeting? I so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tammy, could we uh, go through some announcements? Sure. Announcements. Board of Commissioners meetings coming up Monday, November 22nd and Monday, December 6th uh, here at the Radnor Township Building. Parks and Recreation Board will meet Thursday, December 9th here at the Radnor Township Building. The Willows Craft Show will run on Thursday, November 18th to Saturday, December 4th. The New York City Excursion is planned for Saturday, December 4th. Holiday at the Willows will take place on Sunday, December 12th at the Willows. And John Fisher is here to talk about the next announcement under item F on your agenda. Go ahead, John. Good evening, John Fisher, president of the Ryder Conservancy. And on behalf of the Conservancy, the EAC, and the League of Women Voters, I would like to invite you and your listening audience to a panel discussion which we're going to hold in this room on Monday, November the 29th, between 7 and 9, dealing with the issue of how we can green our zoning ordinances. And by green our zoning ordinances, I mean what can we do to amend our zoning ordinances to encourage or mandate uh, developers to preserve as much green space in their projects as is uh, legally possible. We're going to have four speakers followed by a Q&A. Uh, Matt Bauman's going to start off uh, by explaining what green provisions we have in our zoning ordinances now. Uh, we're then going to have two speakers from Natural Lands Trust. The NLT has done a lot of work with townships, particularly in Delaware County, in developing uh, green ordinances, and they, they'll run some of their ideas past us. We're going to have the township manager from uh, West Vincent Township. Uh, he developed a number of these green ordinances uh, while he was actually on the uh, planning commission and implemented them uh, when he became the township manager. Uh, and finally, Chip Vaughn, who most of you probably know as a Ryder developer, uh, we'll talk about his project, Traymore, uh, which is down in Rose Valley. He's in the process of developing it now, and he worked with NLT and the township down there to uh, develop the green ordinances, which really permitted him to uh, preserve a great deal of the open space in, in his particular project. So we think this is an important topic to discuss while we still have some green space left uh, in Ryder, and we hope um, all of you can attend and that you'll come with your questions and ideas. We're going to have, a, hopefully, a very active uh, Q&A after this and really uh, talk about some, um, you know, ideas that we might be able to implement. So unless you have any questions, I hope to see you on the 29th. Thank you. That sounds great. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Tell me activities report. Activities report for October. In October, the Parks and Recreation Department had many programs up and running, including junior soccer, after school flag football, the fall youth basketball league lunchtime hoops, men's evening pickup hoops, five star preschool sports, play ball, tennis, squash, and after school science and after school chess at Ithan Elementary School. Planning for the winter and spring 2010 2011 is underway, and we are evaluating our program and event offerings. We're excited to launch another exciting season of Radnor Youth Basketball. We've been working out the details for the program related to gym schedules and agreements, program insurance, communications and equipment. Registration is still open. Please visit www.radnorsports.com to view all of the pertinent information and registration instructions. Registrations are also being taken for the Griffin Volleyball Program for grades 5 to 10. Please check it out at our website at www.radnerparksandrecreation.com. You can register for this program uh, by printing out the, the information and registration form. And you can also check out updates that we have on upcoming winter and spring 2011 programs. On Sunday, October 31st, members of our department attended and coordinated the 33rd annual Penn Medicine Radner Run, which proved a record setting year. 782 red runners registered for the five mile course and 185 participants joined in the one mile fun run and walk. 
With 967 participants, this year's numbers break the prior record set in 2003 of 822. We had gorgeous weather that day and lots of fun in addition to a great race. Pumpkin, pumpkin carving, face painting, balloon sculptures, and a costume parade kept the kids happy along with delicious treats from area vendors. Our department led many efforts to help with this, the success of this event. And I would like to pass on a special, uh, special thank you to all of them, as well as the other township departments that helped us prepare for the race, along with Radnor Ambulance and the many volunteers that joined us on race day. You'll see in your packets that I did include what was the advertisement that was in the newspaper. So you could take a look at that to see all the wonderful pictures from the event. Over the last several weeks, our department and staff members and Willow's director have been working very diligently to, send, to assemble information relative to all areas of our operations, performance, and budget. I've been compiling all of this information into a presentation that will be delivered in the coming weeks to the Board of, Commissioner, Board of Commissioners that will illustrate several, several points in relation to our department uh, that have to do with Radnor Activity Center, the Willows, our parks and facilities, and other areas of our services and operations. It's important for me to point out that the Parks Board will be involved in this process and will look to include you on many recommendations that we're going to have to make as that process unfolds. Our department has continued to evaluate sponsorship opportunities for community events and programs and explore opportunities for partnerships with area businesses and organizations in the area. In October, we submitted two applications for potential spring 2011 event sponsorships, one to Bank of America and one to M&T Bank. We recently learned that we've been denied sponsorship at this time from Bank of America. In addition to programming, usage at Radnor Activity Center uh, at Sulpizio Gymnasium is also being coordinated. Six rentals took place in October for activities such as basketball and birthday parties. We also ho hosted the Vice President of the United States on Wednesday, October 27th, and the general election was held uh, there on the following Tuesday. We continue to coordinate and schedule the facility with various public and private groups within the community, along with the department's fall and winter uh, recreational usage. The Willows Mansion hosted six events in October, and 16 events are on the schedule presently for November. Fenimore Woods had 68 rentals with approximately 4,760 people attending. Bo Connor Park, the Willows, Clemacrone Park, Odoricio Park all had uh, rentals that were around 43 with approximately 2,000 people attending. My special thanks goes out to the parks crew for their diligent work uh, on keeping the parks clean during the, the very busy picnic season. Fall field and facility schedule has continued and we're working with the community sports organizations and local schools and wrap ups for the season will be taking place shortly. On Sunday, October 20, on some, Sunday, October 17th, a ceremony took place to dedicate the Wayne Natatorium uh, State Historical Marker from the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission at Willow Avenue and Radnor Street Road near Cowan Park. This man-made swimming pool was one of the largest in the country and was an attraction in Wayne between 1895 and 1903. Be sure to check it out over there near the park, near the park entrance sign of Callum Park. On Sunday, October 17th, the eighth annual Sarah McCarran Park Cleanup took place at Skunk Hollow where there were approximately 200 people in attendance. The group consisted of approximately 100 scouts, Radnor High School girls crew team members, Radnor Middle School watershed, mem watershed members, and members of the Sarah McCarran family. I'd like to uh, pass along a special thank you to all of them who took part in this wonderful and successful event. The Parks and Recreation Department had received a DCED grant for park signage at Emlyn Tunnel and Clemacrone Parks. Manufacturing of the signs is almost complete and I'm working with the sign company to arrange the final details and set a date for installation. Members of the Public Works Department will be relocating the existing park signage that's there to make way for the new signs. I will also be meeting with members of the Garrett Hill community to assist and give further input on the installation locations at each park site. The $100,000 grant received from DCNR for Cowan Park is currently being reviewed for possible park improvements and to ensure compliance with the DCNR grant and, and township code. The Public Works Director and I had reviewed and developed the park comfort stations for future implementation with members of the Parks and Recreation Committee, uh, Parks and Recreation Committee of the Board of Commissioners, and with all of you. 
We prepared the details of a request for proposal for the architectural design for this standard, and it is complete. The request for proposal has been, com has been finalized, and we're planning to put it on the agenda for the Board of Commissioners on Monday, November 22nd. Brandner Township, along with the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, has submitted a grant through the PA, uh, Pennsylvania DEP Environmental, Environmental Steward, Stewardship Fund, Growing Greener, to fund a project that would develop a master plan for the West Wayne Preserve. This plan restores the wooded wetland to the site, manages water from the site's watershed, creates a passive park with, air, with area and excessive trails, views, and habitat, and restores the habitat to native and healthy specimens of trees and shrubs. A second grant has been submitted through the DEP Coastal Resources Management Program that would enhance the public access by potentially using funds for path installation, signage, and an overlook structure from the existing Radnor Trail. For more information on, on updates on what's happening in the Radnor Township Parks and Recreation Department, please be sure to check out our weekly reports that are posted at www.radnor.com under featured links. These are updated on Thursday of every week. One other thing I just wanted to point out, we're excited to uh, present you all with uh, a map that you all received in your packets that gives a really nice uh, overview of Radnor Township and the parks. Our department had worked to actually include the piece on the back of the map that includes some details about our department. And that map has been mailed to all of the residents. And we want to thank Franklin Map for providing us with that. It was paid for by advertisements. And that concludes my report for October. Thank you, Tammy. Any questions for Tammy? I, I have a couple of Cowan comments. Uh, the Cowan Park uh, grant, um, I've been approached by a number of people who are saying, why are we spending that kind of money at Cowan Park when there might be some other facilities that are more in more need of uh, repair or, or assistance? And I think it's important to state that that grant is specifically for that park. Yeah in that park alone. We cannot use that money for anything else. It was set up that way however many years ago they actually asked for it. And so we're doing the best we can with those funds uh, under the design of the grant. And it, it's also inclusive of replacing the comfort station, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. So. Yeah. yeah, so the other things that we'd like to do in that park, we really can't do with those dollars. So uh, we're doing, the be again, the best we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me, I, I know you're putting together some numbers right now for the uh, commissioners for the budget and everything else. I don't know if you're prepared to do it tonight. You're probably not, but maybe we can have it for next week or next meeting, uh, which would be a breakdown as to our revenues. Uh, basically taking a look at all the township programs that we put together, the kids' programs and different camps, et cetera, et cetera, and taking a look at what our expenses were and what the revenues were. I think it's very, very important for the township residents to be aware of where we stand on that. Is that a, a, a losing proposition for us? Are we making money out of that? Are we breaking even? Where do we stand on that? Also, too, if you can break down the willows, mm -hmm. okay, and the indoor facility. Okay, I think that would be a big help for us. Okay, and we have, we have those numbers assembled. I don't have them right on me right, right. here, but we have put those together. Uh, I had actually been asked by... Um, the township manager as well as the finance director to prepare a presentation. Uh, as I had mentioned in my report, I'll be making that to members of the Board of Commissioners. Um, and all of that detail and all of that data will be included in there. Excellent. And um, it, we do have it broken out for Radnor Activity Center as well, so it's important to note that too. Great. Great. Anything else for Tammy? Okay, let's go into uh, committee reports. Um, Shade Tree Commission, anything there? Okay. School board report. Yeah, the school board met uh, October 26th, and uh, at that meeting we approved uh, the QSIP bond, qualified school construction bond, um, to, for a maximum amount of $1,781,250. Um, this money comes at extremely favorable uh, rates uh, that are supported by um, ARA stimulus money. And um, the uh, proceeds will be used to um, uh, improvement for improvements at Wayne Elementary School for uh, the HVAC system and some related project work. Um, and then secondly, we uh, bid goodbye to our finance director, Sharon Learn. 
and welcomed Tim Vale, who is joining us from Centennial School District as our new um, budget uh, manager. Um, and then, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the Lower Marion game is going to be this weekend. This has been LM week at Radnor High School. I attended the dress rehearsal for the pep rally today. Uh, it will be a fine time tomorrow. I'm not sure how much work is going to get done, but there will be much school spirit. And uh, we say, go Radnor, beat LM. And the game is, and the game is Saturday, Saturday, Saturday afternoon, uh, 1.30? At Arnold Field, Lower Marion. Yeah. There you go. Arnold Field, Lower Marion, 1.30. <laughs> right. And there will be a tent uh, hosted by the, um, the Booster Club, okay, for uh, a pre-party celebration. Bring your own food. And, but uh, we're trying to get together and having a, a tailgate party before the game. So everybody is welcome to, to join the Booster Parents. Good. Um, any questions for the school board report? I have to ask this. I know you guys are negotiating with the commissioners, and the only reason why I'm stepping in between is because it has a lot to do with park and rec as we go along. How are you guys going along with the um, negotiation for uh, maintenance, field maintenance? Okay. That's fair enough. I just had to ask. <laughs> We're just taking little baby steps. Okay. Um, Mike, uh, field committee, do you have a report on that? Yes. Uh, since the last meeting, the field committee uh, met, and it was uh, Tammy and Leah were there, as well as Tom, uh, myself, Paul, Tatora, and Andy uh, joined us. Uh, we met at Sopizio Gym, and what we did is we took a look at the items in the Citizens Advisory Report, and there were about 10 items that related to Park and Rec there. Uh, we took about five of them and discussed them uh, during our meeting. We talked about the winter rec programs, uh, the review of the nine parcels that are identified in the report, that some are called parks, but they, they really are not utilized that way. Uh, Paul kindly identified them for us, and we got an understanding and background of how they came about. Uh, we talked about participation fees um, and programs that were not covering expenses. And, fi and finally, we talked about the financial viability of the Willows and Sulpizio Gym. Uh, we identified some follow-up action items uh, with Tammy and Leah, and uh, also wanted to identify some processes and criteria for how to look at the Willows and how to look at Sulpizio Gym, looked at naming rights uh, with regard to certain facilities. Uh, so I think we had a pretty good discussion that, that took the foundation from what the Citizens Advisory Report was, went through that, what we could get in that particular meeting, and we have action steps going forward. And do you have a planned meeting, a future meeting? Uh, probably up? after Thanksgiving. Okay, great. Uh, with that in mind, the field committee is, 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 is a lot there. There's an awful lot there. So we also have an indoor facility uh, committee. Okay, and I asked Fenton, if he would, to get a meeting going up on that because I think it's very, very important that we take a look at Sulpizio in a lot of detail, in very, very strict detail. And um, Fenton, you have a couple of things to add to that tonight? Uh, yeah. I, um, last week, Tom and I met with Tammy, and one of the things that we talked about was the usage and the utilization of uh, Sulpizio and potentially looking at some areas of uh, opportunity where we might be able to try and come up with some programming or programs that may fit into some areas that are um, downtime or uh, times when Sulpizio is not being used <coughs> that we might be able to offer some programs that we could potentially uh, generate some revenue and uh, offer some uh, some programs to some of the folks in the township that may be worthwhile and be exciting for um, in addition to some of the other programs that we're offering. Um, so what I was going to uh, offer is, f is find out if there's anybody else that's interested in being uh, involved in the, uh, in the meeting with the Indoor Facilities Committee and trying to see if we can set up a time to get together and kind of review um, some of the things that are going on there, look at some of the opportunities of uh, some downtime, and then uh, see if we maybe can come up with some thoughts or ideas that may be able to uh, push the, uh, the util utilization of that facility um, going forward. Um, our committee is consistent of, who's, who's on that committee of, as far as right now, that, uh, and is there anybody else that's interested in being on that? Tammy, do you have that list? The indoor 
The indoor facility committee consists of you, Tom, Fenton, Bob Higgins, and Jim Schwartz. Okay. Would anybody else like to serve in that committee? It's a group. It's a solid group. <laughs> but we, we will accept the another volunteer. <laughs> Bob would definitely be somebody we want to yeah. involve too. <clears throat> and again, one of the things we're going to be looking at is the rates we're charging uh, to the community. Uh, and comparing that against uh, indoor facility rates and other communities are, are asking for and, and are we in line and what we're doing there. And if there's anything at all possible to do with that facility where maybe we can, I don't know, move the floor, do something, what we, can we add additional space that we could possibly bring in some other um, facilities? We kicked around the idea of Mike at the meeting we had with you about uh, naming rights. You know, maybe bringing in a pen medicine or something like that, and, and, and trying to get something there, and maybe have them have a little office space there for them to do blood testing or whatever the case may be, you know, blood pressure testing. So we'll see. There's a lot of ideas, and I think they all have to be explored before we can give some reasonable impact to the commissioners and, and some feedback as to whether or not the viability of that facility is there or not. Um, any other committee reports? Okay, we have a commissioner's update. We have two commissioners here. Uh, the discussion you just had about budget is probably the main thing that I'd be interested in uh, your following because, as you know, this is a real tough situation, not just this year but in the future. Um, so we're going to be very interested in your feedback on anything to do with uh, you know, rates, charges, right. uh, possibly charging for things that we currently do not charge for, um, you know, that type of information. Um, the event at Sulpizio for Vice President Biden was incredible. It was packed to the, the rafters, and uh, Tammy didn't tell you, and she probably doesn't want to announce it publicly, but that was a nice rental fee, too, so. Yes, it was. And uh, the township managed to do it with no overtime, so that uh, the only cost incurred were just having the facility out of service, basically. So that was all positive. Um, other than that, Commissioner Schaefer's here and has an issue she wants to talk to you about. So that's all I have. Okay. Tom, would you prefer bringing this up under new business or the sawmill? We, we could do it right now. Okay. But sawmill so park, sure. So hello, everyone. Um, I have a little project, a potential project brewing that I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, and this is not the first time this potential project has, I think, many moons ago. Some people looked into this before. Some neighbors in um, the fourth ward down by Malin and Briarwood have approached me and asked if we could look into extending the sawmill trail. Right now there's a trail that goes par runs parallel to the, saw uh, to the creek on, at Sawmill Park and it goes into the woods a good distance down the creek but then it just stops. Um, and as it turns out, we, the township, own a tiny, tiny little unnamed park on Malin Road. It's very small but it's a little piece of public land that's nicely kept. We've planted some trees there. It's, nice little area um, and the thought would be to just join that little park to that trail that's already there. Um, Malin and Briarwood are streets that walkers and joggers use all the time so it would be a nice way to get the foot traffic off of the road and bring it in through the woods across um, you know parallel to the stream and bring them all the way into Sawmill Park and then you could cross over and get um, uh, cross over Sawmill Road and get all the way to Skunk Hollow and then walk all the way to the Willows. It would be a really nice extension. It's not that far, um, but it's you know bushwhacking terrain right now and pretty wet. So we're looking into this right now. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be trekking that with Tammy, um, perhaps Leah, perhaps anybody else who wants to come to see you know, how much work this will involve and you know, how realistic it is if we're going to need funding, where the heck we would get the funding, you know, that type of thing. Right. Um, we're also working with the, um, 
Well, I, we've been discussing it with uh, John Fisher from the Trails Committee. John and Bob Miklas are the ones who looked at this many years, moons ago. They were looking at coming out on Briarwood, not on Malin, so which required coming a little bit too close to private property, and it, it ran into some issues. But this is all public property. This is all owned by Radnor, so it's a little bit less problematic on that front. So I bring it to your attention, just so that you know this is brewing. Um, if any of you are interested, you are so welcome to join us on our little bushwhacking trek. Um, and even if you don't want to come on the trek, you know, just to be in the loop and, and, and hear how things are progressing as we go along. Absolutely. Uh, John, do you think this would be wise to put this on the trail committee uh, for the meeting? Okay. And then that will give us a little bit more feedback back to the board. Tammy, is, uh, is that something that Kevin Yim would uh, be interested in uh, potentially pursuing? Potentially, yes. I see in your, uh, your announcement that he's looking at uh, re projects regarding trail enhancements and extensions as a part of this Eagle Scout project. It is certainly a possibility. Okay. We have to examine the detail, and I want to get out there and take a look at it with you so I can see it and visualize a little bit better. Maybe, maybe we could include him in that, in that walk. That'd be great. Wear your boots. Why don't you guys <laughs> let us know when you plan the walk? And um, sure. any of us who might be available that day would gladly go along with you. Great. Okay, great. Any oh. old business? I just had a question. Sure. Uh, Elaine, I'm just looking on the, our new map here. So this is the little small park is Sawmill Park. No. no. Well, Sawmill Park is not so little. Yeah, I was compared say, to okay. this no, other okay. tiny little park. Where's uh, the tiny little park? It's not named. It's not. De it's not even designated on any of our maps as a park. It's just kind of a little piece of a triangle of land in between, you know, residential properties that is, is owned by Radnor. And it's, it's, I mean, we've planted some beautiful trees there. It's a nice little area. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have any designation. Um, and it's not connected to anything. Where is it? It, it is on Malin Road. Um, there's where, where Briarwood hits Malin, pardon? And Hansel Road from Newtown Township or Newtown Square Township comes in where that kind of jagged four-way is. It's kind of right across the street from where Hansel comes in. Okay, so it's literally, it is right at the absolute edge of the township according to this map. Well, right, Malin Lo Malin's Road is the, um, yeah. you know, on the other side yeah. of Malin right there is Newtown Square. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. Which, I mean, if we could find a way, if there are any trails over in Newtown Square, if, we, if you can find a way to connect one, a trail from one township to another township, it opens up a whole can of fun funding because that is, you know, the IT project now is intermunicipal trails. Thank you. Any other questions for Elaine? Well, for our Just one, you, you said it's real wet in there. Is there going to be any wetland issue problems or anything? or? Well, not for a trail, but um, I mean, how realistic it is. I mean, if we're going to have to build raised, you know, boardwalks, it's a money issue, really. Okay. So we have to. That's why we have to walk it and see, you know, how wet is it? How, how, how long is it wet? Is there a way to get around the wet area, et cetera? Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Any, any old business? Okay, new business. Uh, we've been asked. Uh, by Commissioner Curley to kick around a little bit an idea of um, an abandoned cemetery in West Wayne, as he says, as it relates to Park and Rec. Tammy, do you have any additional information you can give us at this point? Um, at this point, other than the letter, uh, I, it's my understanding that this request was made in, at the last meeting in October and that this was, it was discussed um, in regard to trying to uh, look at the value of this property as an asset, and I believe that uh, the board was looking to you, the Parks Board, to take a look at it and see if we support it as an asset, if we think it's something that could be a collective part integral to our current park system. Uh, I do know that it, as of right now, I, I, I believe there are active plots in the cemetery from the information that I had been given. Uh, it is about three quarters of an acre in size, and I can actually bring up the picture if you want to take a look at that uh, to kind of eyeball it a little bit better. Uh, it's my understanding that this property was part of a trust that had ran out, and um, 
it had become an orphan property that now um, with I guess some some signatures for acquisition we can bring it back to the township or it will come easily back to the township and we have to evaluate um, you know I guess if it's something that we want to support and try and formulate that into into yeah. some just, ideas and writing just for the off board the cuff, there's, there's probably about 1,000 questions to ask about this okay before we can even bring in uh, sure. discussion up uh, and I'm sure everybody has some I'll just throw a couple out is it a historical facility okay therefore what are our restrictions what can we do there what can't we do there uh, what kind of maintenance does a place need how much is that going to cost a township on an annual basis does it need repair currently okay how much will that cost us um, and I'll, I'll let everybody else fire off here and what your thoughts are uh, Tammy did you say in your comments that there are active plots that's that's what I had been informed that there are actual plots that if people pass, they have the pot plots they could end up in this cemetery. That really makes it a completely different ball of wax. You will because, be maintaining a cemetery. Then you're in the cemetery business. And, yeah, and I think we have to evaluate to what, to what degree we inherit all of that, you know, all of those deeds in that respect. Well, right, right, I, that becomes a legal issue to resolve and try and purchase back those, those active plots. So we're not in the cemetery. I've right. got. I've got a little bit of information. Um, I had remembered something about a cemetery cleanup from months ago, and it turns out I think there was just another one, and I pulled it out of the paper. This uh, cemetery was originally attached to what had been the Radnor Baptist Church at the corner of Conestoga and West Wayne. The church was demolished in the 50s. Money for the sale of the property was put in this trust for the preservation and perpetuity of the cemetery. Um, the perpetuity uh, were there. It's gone. The money's gone. Uh, according to the bank that most recently held the funds. Uh, there have been groups of volunteers there who have been working to clean it up and fix it up. Uh, there was a cleanup held Saturday the 16th. Um, and what they planned to do at the time was paint the fence, rip up ivy, cut out remaining invasive plants, and chop out vine roots and small trees. Uh, the Radnor Historical Society has been involved with this. So has the Rain Wayne Rotary Club, the American Legion Post uh, 668, the Italian American Club, an adjoining condominium association, a um, bunch of volunteers, including a group of Villanova students who helped with this. Um, there are 400 or so graves there, and which indicate that there are members there of both the Sons of the American Revolution and the Grand Army of the Republic, Civil War veterans. Um, the society president, Ted Pollard, said that a Pennsylvania statute allows munis municipalities to take over the care of abandoned cemeteries and is hoping that Radnor will commit to that care. Um, the church was uh, established in 1841 at a building that had been initially a meeting hall and then um, was later replaced with a um, stone-like church building, which was the thing that was torn down in 1950 or the early 50s. Um, so that's a bit of background about it. Um, that's great. That's I, I thought it raised some questions, though, about uh, you know the idea of turning. I mean, it's a cemetery. There are people buried there. Um, I, I don't know. That's what are we going to do with it? Yeah, yeah. Is that the you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I just while I think it's a you know we we should definitely entertain the idea of taking it over and just maintaining it in some kind of way, but as a you know as a civic responsibility. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't think you turn it into a ball field, uh, no. you know. Uh, so it, it, I'm, I'm not sure what we would do. It's pretty much a single do. use uh, type right. property. Yeah, <laughs> kind <laughs> of, <laughs> kind of. Um, but apparently, I, I look, you know. I, so I, I googled a bit. There are protocols for for doing things with abandoned cemeteries, and there are, you know, there are people out there who are interested in the historical value, and uh, you know, there are things townships who are entertaining this kind of a question. I guess can. Uh, there are resources out there for us to uh, pursue. So okay. I offer all that, and uh, you know that's Sam that, Strike's article and uh, 10 minutes of my time. That's, that's great feedback. That's great. So, I think the biggest concern I have right now is the fact that we're, we're at a financial crunch in the, in the township as we are, okay? Very limited dollars and an awful lot of things that have to be done tomorrow. And um, about so I, I would think, Tammy, if we can get some research done on this as to what will it cost, Okay, to A, put it in working order, what would it cost to maintain it over an annual basis? Um, all alone, all those things like that, it, it might be something where we may want to just turn it over to 
the historical society well, and say, hey, you guys handle it. Yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah, we'll, but, we'll throw you some money every year. Well, you know, if, that, if that that's to me, it's, there, there is an interest group that's already targeted this property. Yeah. And it seems to me that at least right now, we could be in a position of encouraging that effort to mm -hmm. keep going. Um, you know, it's great to have volunteers come in and, you For know, sure. do some cleanup and so forth. And um, in terms of ownership, I mean, that's a legal, Mike's point is that's a legal question. Right. And I think we'd have to maybe clear that up. But, um, you know, I'm not sure what anyone would want to do with it other than make sure it looks presentable and it's the, the site is treated with, with respect. Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Tom, it's in my neighborhood and it looks so much better than it did before Ted Pollard and his volunteers went in. Uh, John Ward came in and did some tree work mm -hmm. gratis and there have been a lot of volunteers that have taken out poison ivy and other weeds and it's really spruced up. The, yeah. question, the question would be that if the township were to take ownership of it, does that volunteer base Stop. somewhat go away? Um, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I guess the other thought would be what's involved, what, what, what's, what does the charter say as far as, as far as acquisitions? I mean, what are the proper procedures and formats? And I mean, I, know, I think that's the key issue. I, I think that we all generally support the idea yeah preserving an historical element in the township. I think we support what the Historical Society is doing and what Commissioner Curley's raising. I think the bigger issue is what's the process to pick up a piece of land? Right. Is it is it just kind of a, well, here's a situation and we react to it. We have we have five or six pieces of land now that that situation resulted right. in and I think we question why we have those properties. Yeah. Um, so I, w I would look for some direction from the township administration on defining a land acquisition process that then we can gather information um, and, and move forward in a thorough fashion. I think we all think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. it, it's more the mechanism that we go after it I think needs to be better defined. Tom, just so that you know, um, this is also going in front of the open space committee. And in as much as this is open space as opposed to a, a park or whatnot um, there is a process and it'll go in front of that committee there are criteria in our open space space plan we will ask pretty much the same questions that you all just asked in that committee um, and weigh that weigh the criteria and and see where it falls make a recommendation or not the recommendation from that group goes to executive committee of the um, the uh, the board of commissioners and if there is a majority that want to pursue it, it goes, we purchase it through ordinance and there's a public hearing and whatnot. Are, are you suggesting that open space funds would be used to purchase the cemetery? It's, there's no price. It's, it's a well, there, there's no price, but there's a cost. There's a cost for a legal <coughs> to maintain, review. For sure. there, there are costs associated with it. The fact that it's not. Well, there's no acquisition costs. There well, would be maintenance costs. Right. Yes, and that's what you would use. But there would also be legal costs and review costs. Minimal. I mean, we, that would be in-house. We'd use our solicitor I, for I, it. I don't know. Most, most legal stuff ten, tends to be slow and expensive, on, on my experience, with, with land going mm -hmm. over you know, long periods of property. I, I guess my question is, would open space funds, in your view, be used to purchase or acquire a cemetery? I, that is not what the, our, our committee will be considering. It, we will be considering whether it would be acceptable as a, um, as a, at no price, you know, at a free price. Um, we have very little in our open space fund, so there's not, there's nothing really there to spend. Um, and the part of the analysis, one of the criteria that you go through is the maintenance cost, what this will mean in the long, even if it's free, what does it cost? And is it, you know, is that something that our township can, it, you know, is it important enough to, to take on those costs for the value that it's going to bring us in, you know, environmental and, and open space qualities? Well, so that's the process that will happen. That will probably happen in January at our next meeting. I, I guess my, my bigger question would be what happens if we just do nothing and let the volunteer effort to, you know, continue? Um, do we have to do something? We've no. been asked by a commissioner to do something or come up with some sort of idea and maybe our idea is just that 
just what you're saying. We you know, it, it, it's been there all this time. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's paying attention to it now. It right. seems to be a focal point for some community service. Um, I guess maybe my my question would be, no one, I mean, no one else is going to buy it. It's a cemetery, right. so maybe we just let it be. Just let it be. Well, let's get that information if we can, Tammy, okay, okay, as to cost, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe what we'd want to do, too, is have the Historical Society come here, okay, and give us a presentation, talk about this. And if nothing else, even if we decide not to, as a board, not to get involved with this, maybe that public forum could give them some uh, feedback by the community and maybe get some support in the community to help them out with this project. That's a good idea. Okay, so if we can schedule that, too, as well, Tam, that'd be a, I think it might be a good idea. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts on the cemetery or anything else during the course of the evening? I take a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. <laughs>